Why hello there, the Walrus Clown here, and today we'll be starting a new segment here on Walrus Reviews Today, called Oh Yeah, What A Review, where I go over five pilots that aired on the What A Cartoon segment over on Cartoon Network back in the day. Dexter's Lab, The Powerpuff Girls, Codename Kid Next Door, Cow and Chicken, Courage the Cowardly Dog, and Johnny Bravo all got their starts on Oh Yeah, What A Cartoon. And by the way... If you're wondering why this isn't the TV trash crossover, I did an update video explaining why we had to push it back. And I'm also doing a 400 sub Q&A special. Feel free to ask questions under that video. There will be a card in the corner. Anywho, honor of you. Honor, roll the title sequence! What? Uh? Review, view, 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 view! First, let's talk about Yucky Duck, who got two cartoons for what a cartoon. So I'm tackling both in one go. Yucky Duck Short Orders is a short created by Pat Ventura that was broadcast by Cartoon Network on March 5th, 1995. And is about the titular Yucky Duck being a waiter at a fancy restaurant where it's revealed that the kitchen is a mess and probably in violation of several health codes, one of which is being infested with cockroaches. And for the most part is about the customers treating Yucky Duck like garbage even though they are getting exactly what they asked for. Including a Karen who bitches to the manager and Yucky Duck ends up being a soup served to her despite the fact that he seems to be the only employee at the place and is having to pull double duty as both the only waiter and being the only chef making the food, which has to be some kind of worker code violation of some kind. Anywho, on to the second one. Yucky Duck, I'm on my way is what a cartoon's 16th episode and is about Yucky Duck being an EMT who drives an ambulance around town to save people's lives. Where he has a bunch of unfunny shenanigans... About him helping a hippo who got in a car accident, a lion who got a tack stuck in his butt, it was the 90s, gross out humor was a norm, just deal with it, and a fish who was going into cardiac arrest. Only for Yaki to end up needing an ambulance himself, where we end on Yaki crying about how he doesn't have health insurance. While I can more than understand why it wasn't picked up back then, I mean just look at it, the animation was low tier garbage even by pilot standards. But with a bit of tweaking, this could easily be an adult cartoon that any millennial could relate to. Just picture it. A late 20s, early 30s something yucky duck is working multiple part-time jobs in the service industry despite him having a college degree. All the while just barely scraping by without benefits, health insurance, or sick days despite the fact that he's working way more than 60 hours a week and everyone from the older generation treating him like shit and calling him a fool despite him doing everything that that generation told him to do to succeed back when he was a kid. I could easily see this being a political satire cartoon that airs on Adult Swim. The low-tier trash animation would fit right in with all the poorly animated tribe for that network that they make themselves, only this would be better because the clever writing I think would need to make it work would compensate for the shite animation. And now on to Swamp and Tad. Swamp and Tad are the main characters of the What A Cartoon short Mission and Froggable, where every character is voiced by either Jim Cummings or Charlie Adler, and is about the titular Swamp and Tad going on a life or death mission to Earth to fetch an important package assigned to them by the king, whose name is so stupid I'm just going to let the characters do say it for me. Fuck king! They get beamed down to Earth and get the package from Secret Agent Newt, and then a stray dog steals the package. And the rest of the cartoon is about the two of them getting hurt in a slapsticky manner trying to get the package back, only for it to turn out to be a pizza when they get it back to the king who eats it in one bite, and then orders them to get 10 more just like it immediately. While the animation was decent for the era in which it was made, I can see why it failed. The premise just doesn't lend itself to many stories that could be told. But there was potential here. All we need to do is switch up the motivations. How about have Swamp and Tad be sent to Earth to learn about it? This could easily be a fun educational show that taught Earth science, social studies, and history where applicable. And all the shenanigans could be some My Favorite Martian-esque misunderstandings about how the various cultures of Earth work. I could easily see something like that working for the 7-10 to 10 demographic on Netflix or something. 
Up next on the docket is Joff and Help, which is a silent cartoon about a blue cat named Joff accidentally pricking his finger while sewing. He rushes off to the hospital to get his finger examined, only to deal with the doctor and his minions who want to test him for everything except his pricked finger. I don't know what the writers have against modern medicine, but I can clearly see why this wasn't picked up. Ever since this was made in the early to mid 90s and anything animated that wasn't anime was quote for kids unquote and we couldn't have anything that would make them afraid of modern medicine. Dealing with dumb asses that make up the anti-vaxxer movement is already more than enough pseudoscience in regards to health and medicine thank you very much. Anywho, despite this, the short has some of the best animation from the What A Cartoon pilots. So there is some merit here, but even if the whole anti-science thing was changed, I don't see how they could expand this into a full series without adding more characters and giving Joff the ability to say something other than help. And up next is The Kitchen Casanova, which, if you haven't surmised from the title, is about a dinner date. But for now, let's start with the beginning. So our unnamed protagonist, whom I shall refer to as Joe for the purposes of this review, is making a dinner for his date that is going to be arriving soon, all the while ignoring the hunger of his dog Pudge. How dare he, the inhuman monster, someone called the canine equivalent of child services, the chair is too good for this bastard. Anywho, he gets annoyed at the dog for begging, and his unnamed date arrives, and for the sake of this review, we shall call her Carol, and it's revealed that she is a neat freak. To the point where it seems compulsive and quantifies as a mental illness. She goes into the door and after some cheap filler, uh... Joe shows up at the door where it's revealed that he hasn't finished making dinner yet and now has to keep interrupting wooing the girl in order to get stuff ready all the while the poor dog gets slapstick abuse. After some more hijinks with Joe screwing up dinner and Carol becoming increasingly obsessive about cleaning, Joe burns the roast and has to start from scratch and ends up making something that looks like vomit because the pages of the cookbook keep getting turned and he doesn't notice because he's an idiot. Anywho, after she is visibly repulsed by the dish, she takes a bite out of it anyway because she really does seem to like him for whatever reason. And it turns out that the food tastes amazing, and the two of them end up gorging themselves to the point where they start literally eating the table. And pretty much reenact the one scene from Lady and the Tramp only using a table leg instead of spaghetti. And we end on one last bit of animal abuse. The concept is gross, the animation is gross, it's too immature for adults, but too adult for kids. Who is this made for? It gets a hard double thumbs down. Up next is Larry and Steve, a short about a smart dog and the only idiot who actually understands what he is saying, created by Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane. So yes, Steve the dog sounds just like Brian and Larry sounds a lot like Peter. And in fact, this cartoon will eventually evolve into Family Guy after many tweaks. Anywho, the story is presented as Steve making a video journal about how he was adopted after almost being put down in the pound and how Larry saving his life was the beginning of his torture existence having to babysit the moron. After Larry adopts Steve, they get back to Larry's apartment and after the TV lamp and bed in Steve's room all break seconds after he gets into the room, they go to the department store to replace everything, only to find out that Larry is driving with a suspended license, and then a literal fork in the road slices the car in half. And then the two halves meet later just as they get to the store after some unfunny shenanigans. Then even more hijinks happen where Steve gets hurt during the high pressure sales lady showing them stuff, like the massage bed beating the tar out of him, having a bookshelf fall on him after Larry overclocks a lamp into being a lightsaber, and having the TV blow him sky high where he hits an airplane that crashes into the department store. Only for us to cut back to the apartment where Steve is still talking into the camera and Larry breaks it. And the short ends. This had a lot of promise, but I can see why Seth needed to rework a lot of it into being an adult cartoon with topical humor and sex jokes. And that's that. If you liked what you saw, please like, comment, subscribe, hit thumbs up, and turn on notifications. That helps with the algorithm more than you realize. Anywho, it's been a while since I did a movie that wasn't part of a TV franchise that I haven't already talked about. So a standalone movie will be next. See you next time, and stay fresh, cheese bags. Boo!